What is going on guys? This video is going to be about how to get my AWS S3 table to query successfully using AWS Athena when it has partitions on it. So as you can see here on the left hand side, I have a table that has been loaded in S3. It is some animal location information and it's partitioned by date. So when I hit the run query button after a couple of seconds, what you're going to see that no data is coming back. So if we inspect the data in a Jupyter notebook here, Using the simple S3 read parquet method, I'm able to bring it in as a data frame. As you can see, I have my ID column, animal, longitude, latitude, and date. So as you can see here, my data does exist. It's in S3, but it's not showing up in AWS Athena. So how do we solve this? So first things first, you need to make sure that you run the MSCK repair table method on your partition table. So this can be done using the AWS Athena repair table method from AWS Data Wrangler. Passing the table name from glue, the database that is in glue as well, and the full path to that bucket. So when you run the command, you should see succeeded, which is good. So this is the first step. We want to make sure we update our partitions when we write data to our data lake. Now the second thing is you want to make sure that your path and columns names don't have any special characters or capitals in it. So if we check the AWS Athena best practice guide, what you can see here is it says that the only acceptable characters for database names, tables, and column names are lowercase letters, numbers, and underscore characters. So if we go back and inspect our data, what you're going to see here is, aha, uh -huh, I have a column that is capitalized. So this is the root of my problem here. In order to solve this, I'm going to rewrite my date column to be in all lowercase. So I'm going to rewrite my data. So first things first, I'm going to delete my data that exists already in S3. So I'm going to go to that location, which has my data, which is animal underscore locations RK. And I'm just going to delete all of these files here. Delete button. All right, while that's deleting, I'm going to go back to my ETL workflow that actually wrote this data in the first place. So I've done my ETL using a Jupyter Notebook here. First step was to import AWS Wrangler, which is an open source library that makes reading and writing data in AWS S3 really easy. So after I import it, the next step here is I'm going to read in my data using the s3.read underscore CSV method. And I'm reading in now my raw data, which is coming from S3. In the next three lines, I've just defined the path of my Parquet data set that I want to write to. So now the column mapper dictionary, this is just going to control the columns that I want to remap here. So in my example, just to show you the, the failed messages, I made a capital. In this case, I'm going to make it lowercase again. So I'm just going to rename it to date underscore remapped. Now I'm just going to rerun that again. All right. I'm just going to use the rename method from pandas to rename one of my columns. So I'm now going to pass in that column mapper I defined over here. And now you see it's been remapped to date underscore remapped. All right, that looks good. Now to write to Parquet, I use the dot to Parquet method. It takes in your data frame. Your path is your path you want to write to. When you pass the data set parameter as true, this allows me to add partitions to my data set. So now I'm just going to pass in that new partition that I've defined, which is going to be instead of capital date, it's just going to be date underscore remapped. And I'm just going to give that a run. All right, now while that's running, my next step is to update my data catalog with that new information. So uh, the only thing I changed is making this lowercase. So I'm going to change my partition to now be date underscore remapped. And now the catalog dot create underscore parquet table method, what this does is it will update our glue catalog. So if we go to our AWS glue console, you can see all the information about our table and I've originally updated it using this method. So you can see that the column names are here, the data type, the partition key and the comments. So going back, if I now run that function here to create parquet table, it's going to now update that with the partition being the correct name now. My data is now written successfully and I just got my output method with all my locations for the partitions. I'm just gonna run the method to update my parquet table. That ran successfully. Now finally, I'm just going to write the method to update my partitions. All right, so when this block of code finishes running, we should be able to now query our table in AWS Athena successfully. All right, so my partitions have successfully updated. 
I get this message chain succeeded, so we know it's complete. So now if we head back over to AWS Athena here, now if I run this query, hopefully we should get some data now. There you go, our query has successfully run, and now we have data coming through our console. So the takeaway here I want to emphasize is if you have partition data, you're querying it and it doesn't work, make sure that you're running that repair function to update your partition and make sure in S3 that your path, your table name, and your column names do not have any capitals or special characters. So that may be causing you this issue where no data is being returned within AWS Athena. I hope this video was helpful for solving this problem. Please like this video if it was helpful or you learned something and please subscribe to my channel if you want to learn more about working with data with AWS. Thanks for watching and see you next time.